Welcome to video 4 of the last minute GCSE Maths Revision Skills, this one focusing on shape questions. As always, I'll give you a couple of seconds to look at the questions, you can pause the videos, have a go, or you can just watch the answers. Okay, let's get started. The first question is in an area of a triangle, the area of a triangle is base times height, and then half the answer. So 6 times 8 divided by 2 is 24 centimetres squared. Second one, uh, trapezium, we're going to add the parallel sides, in this case being the 5 centimetres and the 9 centimetres, the parallel sides. So we add those together, we then divide that by 2, and finally we multiply it by the height in between them, which in this case is 3 centimetres, the height between them which gives me 21 centimetres squared. Question two, the area of the shape, I'm going to split it up into two, shape one and shape two. Shape one is a rectangle, which is three width and a height of nine. So three times nine is 27. Shape two is also a rectangle. However, its width is not seven. Its height definitely is three, but the width is going to be seven take away three which is 4. So the dimensions are 4 and 3, so I'll do 4 times 3 to give me 12, and I'll add these together to give me my final answer of 39 centimetres squared. The last question, we've got the area and circumference of a circle. The area of a circle is pi times radius squared. The radius of this circle is 4, so pi times 4 squared. On a non-calculated paper, this will be 16 pi. On a calculated paper, I'll just press the S to D button and get my answer. The circumference of the circle is pi times diameter. The diameter of the circle is 8. Again, on a non-calculated paper, I would write 8 pi. On a calculated paper, I would press the S to D button to turn it into a decimal answer. Okay, pause if you want to have a go at these. Okay, so some nice quick ones. First of all, the lines are symmetry. On the first shape, there is a line going down and also a line going across. There are no diagonal lines of symmetry. It wouldn't be the same if we reflected it. And the order of rotational symmetry is how many times can it be rotated around and appear the same? Uh, that's twice. Question E, the volume of this prism. We're going to start by working out the area of this triangle at the end, the cross section, and then we're going to multiply it by the length. So the area of the triangle is 5 times 12, and then I'll half my answer because it's a triangle, and then I'm going to multiply this by the length. Okay, let's work that out. 5 times 12 is 60, 60 divided by 2 is 30, times by 10 is 300 centimetres cubed. And finally, uh, we need to know the different parts of a circle. There are just four parts here. There are a couple of other words that you need to know as well. Uh, the top one, a line that touches a circle, is called a tangent. Uh, on the right-hand side, a line within a circle from one side to the other that doesn't go through the middle is called a chord. On the middle on the left, a line from the middle to the edge of the circle is called a radius. And finally, the edge of a circle is called the circumference. Okay. Three different types of questions here, all to do with right angle triangles. And it's really important you can work out which scale goes with, with, with which question. The first one is to do with two sides of the triangle and it wants to know the third side. Since it's only to do with the sides of the triangles, I know it's a Pythagoras question. Square it, square it, add or take, and then root it. I'm looking here for the longest side, so I know it will be an add question. So 8 squared is 64, 6 squared is 36. Add these together, because we're looking for a longest side, gives me 100, and the square root of 100 is 10 centimetres. 
Second question, again, right angle triangle, it's got a side, a side, but this time it's got an angle. That's a clue that it's a Sokotoa question. Okay, first of all I will label the sides. Away from the angle we've got the opposite, and this longer side is the hypotenuse. So this side uses the opposite and the hypotenuse. They're the sides that have been marked. Looking at Sokotoa underneath... It's going to be the sine, the SOH pyramid that I need to use. I'll get this ready to be filled in. Okay, so the opposite has got an X on, the hypotenuse has got a 12 on, the S stands for sine, and since we're given an angle, I can put that angle in. So sine 30. Remembering on one of these pyramids that when the two things you know are on the bottom, we are going to multiply them together. So I'm going to type into my calculator sine 30 times 12, it will give me an answer of 6 centimetres. Over on the right hand side, again we're given two sides, and it's to do with an angle. So again, it's going to be a Sokotoa question. I'll label the sides, opposite from the angle, and this is the adjacent. Don't need to label the hypotenuse because I don't need it. The Sokotoa pyramid that's got an O and A in is Toa. And once again, I will label the sides. The opposite is 7, the adjacent is 15. I need to write in the, ta in the T, I need to write tan. Now, since we haven't got an angle, this is where I press shift tan on my calculator, which reminds me it's tan minus 1. To put this in on our calculator, we will type in tan minus 1. And since those numbers are on top of each other, I will write them on top of each other in the same way they are in the pyramid. And that will give me my answer, which is 25.0168 degrees. And I could round that if it asked me to. Two angle questions here. Notice I need to give full reasons. That's very important. No reasons will restrict the number of marks you can get. I'm not going to show my calculations here. I will do in the exam. First of all, this angle on the left of the one on the outside can be calculated because angles on a line add to 180. 180 take away 124 is 56. And again, I will show that calculation on my exam paper in the exam. Make sure you do give full reasons as shown here. OK, now we know that the angle on the right within the triangle is 56. We also know the one on the left, which is also 56. That's because this is an isosceles triangle. Again, be sure to write your reasons down. And finally, uh, since the two within the triangle are 56, adding these together gives me 112. Taking that off 180 gives me 68 for the final missing angle. Again, I'll show all those calculations on the exam paper, but I now need to write down the reasons. OK, moving on to the second question. What's interesting here is I can see that there are parallel lines marked by the arrows. This is a five mark question or a four or five mark question, so we're going to have to work out four or five angles before we can get to the final section. It can't be done in one move. So first of all, I can see that the I think one of the only things I can work out at the moment is this angle here within this triangle, this missing angle up here. Because I know angles in a triangle add to 180, by adding these together and taking it off 180, I get 22. Now I can see that I've got one of my parallel line uh, angle rules now. I can see there is a big Z here, which tells me that the two corners within the Zs are the same angle, which means this one here is also 22 degrees. Uh, the angle rule that I've used is alternate angles are the same. Next, I'm looking for any other angle I can find within this shape. And actually, right now, I can see that this angle here must be connected to this angle on the right-hand side of it, since they're both on a straight line. So if I take 41 off 180, I will be left with 139 
for this blue angle. Don't forget to write your reason down. Finally, I can now work out angle X because again I've got a triangle down at the bottom of the page. So by adding the two angles together, 139 and 22, and subtracting these off 180, I am left with 19 degrees. I've already used, um, written down the angle rule that I have used for that one, so I could rewrite it, or I can just let the examiner know that that rule applied to both of those particular angles. My answer, 19 degrees. The first thing I'll do on this question is draw a line from A to B. I'll then measure that with a ruler. Now, hard for me to show this on the screen, but I have measured that previously and it measured to exactly 5 centimetres. I'm going to write that down. Then I will use the scale. The scale says 1 centimetre is 2 kilometres, so I'll times it by 2, which tells me it is 10 kilometres. To work out the bearing of A from B, notice that this question says we are going from point B. Really important we note that it is from B. So what we will do is we will start by drawing our north line on at point B. And we will then measure the angle that goes clockwise from that north line. So this angle all the way around here. Now this question doesn't actually ask you to measure it. It just asks you to draw on the angle. But when you do uh, measure angles, and I measured this one separately, it was 265, it's always given as a three-digit answer. So if your answer was 53, you'd write 053. Calculate the size of the exterior angle. Well, all you need to know about any regular polygon is that the exterior angle, that's this one here, is 360 divided by the number of sides. In this case, it's 6, so that would be 60 degrees. It doesn't ask for this in the question, but it's important to note that the inside angle, the interior, would be 120, because that's 180 take away 60. On the last question, it's asking me to describe a transformation. There are four different transformations, and I like to use the name Terry to help me remember these. Translate, enlarge, rotate, reflect, yes, remember them. So the first one from A to B has been translated and to work out exactly um, how far we're going to look at one um, corner of shape A and one corner of shape B. I'll use this top left one and I can see that it's gone left 4 and then down 3. So using a vector that will be minus 4 and minus 3. Remember the first number on a vector is always how far left or right and the second number is always how far up and down. Again, using those Terry words to describe the transformation, we are going to describe the next three. So A onto B here has been reflected, and it's been reflected in the mirror line that I've just drawn on. And that mirror line is y equals minus 1. The middle one has been rotated. I need to write down how far it's been rotated 180 degrees clockwise. And whenever we describe rotations, we also put where it's, uh, the centre point is. In this case, it's around 0, 0. And we can use tracing paper to help with that. The last one has been enlarged. Now since B is twice as big in all dimensions, we can put that the scale factor is 2. And finally we would want to know where the centre point is. I will draw on lines from each corner. So first from the bottom right corners, and now from the bottom left. And we can see that these two lines cross at the point 5, 1. So again, this is the centre point, so from... Point five one. The question on the left asked me to draw the net. The net is the sh is the all the faces folded out. If the if the three um, D object in this case a cuboid um, 
was taken to pieces. It tells me the base has been given, and the base is 6 by 4. So what we will do is we will draw on all the other um, faces. So connected to the base, we've got the two sides, which are 4 by 1. Now we'll add the front flaps on, which are 6 across and 1 up. The back will be the same. And finally, we'll need the top, which will be the same as the base, so a 6 by 4 um, rectangle on top. OK, that's all done. Uh, the question on the right is to do with vectors. The first one gives you a vector A to B, which is 3, 1, and it wants to know what six of these are. So just be careful that you don't get this confused with fractions. We're not going to put uh, these as fractions or anything like that. We're just going to multiply the top and bottom numbers by 6. 18 and 3. The second one wants you to add together A, B and B, C. So again, don't get confused. They're not fractions. We don't need common denominators. We're simply going to add these vectors together. Okay, so minus, uh, sorry, 3 add minus 2 gives me 1. 1 add 3 gives me 4. And that's done. The last question is a construction question. Read it really carefully and we'll see we've got a park, there's a scale being given and a new play area is going to be constructed within this park. It's got to be no more than 60 metres from point B. Now, just highlighting that for a second, 60 metres on this scale will be 6 centimetres. And I urge you to write that down because you're going to show the examiner that you're going to start this question. So I need to draw a 6 centimetre circle around point B. Okay, let's move on to the next clue. It's got to be closer to AD than CD. Let's just highlight those lines on the diagram. So we're going to do a perpendicular or an angle bisector. We've got to decide which one it will be. Well, since I've made a V shape here, it's going to be an angle bisector. If you need to revise these, please see the separate videos. We start by drawing on the arcs using the point at point D. And now we get crossing arcs, putting the points at those two arcs that we've just made. And finally, we'll draw a line from point D through the crossed arcs. OK, let's now try and work out where the play area can be positioned. So it's got to be no more than 60 metres from B, so it's going to be within the circle. And it's got to be closer to the AD line than the CD line. So it's going to be to the left or below the blue dotted line. And you'll see here I've shaded the region where it could be. If you need more help on construction videos, please see the separate videos which are available. And I hope you found this fourth video on last minute foundation math revision useful. Remember there are three other videos focusing on number, algebra and data skills. And I'm hoping that if you've watched all four of the videos you're feeling really confident with your revision. If you need help, make sure you see your teacher in plenty of time before your exam. And good luck with your last minute revision.